record this no problem it's okay sure uh, thank you so much so uh, let us begin uh, okay. kindly introduce yourself how long have you been part of the travel services industry specifically uh, religious travel in, uh, services and how have mm -hmm. you seen the industry change evolve over the years okay okay uh, so my name is usman farooq and uh, i am uh, the founder of uh, green tourism uh, basically we are promoting sustainable tourism and uh, we have we are uh, we are doing business since uh, 2012 uh, around about 12 years from uh, we, uh, we are doing business and we are representing pakistan all over the world we are facilitating uh, domestic tourists we are facilitating foreigners we are facilitating different nationalities and uh, we provide services for uh, expeditions we provide services for uh, historical tours sightseeing tours uh, city tours we are uh, we uh, provide different services for that uh, one part of that is uh, religious tourism now religious tourism is uh, a very important part and uh, pakistan is the kind of you can say the birthplace of sikhism pakistan is a, a hot spot for uh, buddhism and then uh, obviously you know uh, uh, as islam pakistan is an islamic republic of pakistan islamic republic so definitely we do have a lot of sites for islamic tourism so yes. com coming coming to the coming to the first point uh, to the sikh community as we all know that before pakistan is uh, specifically the punjab area uh, these uh, sikh sikh uh, community was the habitat of these areas and uh, kartarpur uh, kartarpur uh, hasan abdal dera saheb panja saheb then uh, uh, nankana saheb then uh, sites of uh, ranjit singh so uh, as I'm saying that all over the world, uh, religious tourism is being used to earn a lot of money. And uh, tourism is, is one of the uh, only sources of income in which it is a complete injection to the economy. So, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, very unfortunately, due to uh, we, we, we couldn't capitalize on the, on the tourism part of our com uh, country. We did capitalize on the on the you know for the nature part. We had uh, climbing expeditions. We have uh, trekking, camping, uh, and expeditions. But even other than that, we have a lot of potential. We have uh, Indus Valley civilization, which also relates to the Buddhist uh, tourism because we have Texela for uh, mm -hmm. then we have uh, Manthal Rock in Skardu. So we have a lot of uh, potential, <clears throat> but again, as uh, again as I said, that unfortunately we couldn't capitalize on uh, on that uh, part. So, but uh, Alhamdulillah, we are working on it. And uh, recently, I've been back from uh, the travel and adventure show in New York uh, on the fourth of. Uh, it was held on twenty uh, seventh, twenty eighth February. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, January. So. Again, uh, along uh, along with other 27, 28 tour operators, I was uh, part of that uh, show in uh, America. <clears throat> but again, there is a trust deficit uh, between the uh, tourist and between uh, on on our part. Mm -hmm. Now, I I think so that uh, government uh, needs to take initiatives to promote infrastructure, to promote communication, to facilitate tourists. That will help a lot uh, in order to increase and maximize the number of visitors we, we are uh, having. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, coming back to uh, you serving the domestic and the foreign tourists. Uh, if, hum unko batayin, uh, if we try to take a proportion of it, how many of uh, are your domestic tourist market and how much of it is uh, from foreign tourists? Like 20, 30, something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will rate around 10 to 15 percent is the foreign market. I mean, are you are you asking the number of visitors? Uh, number of visitors, uh, any uh, the revenue that we're earning. How much are we getting from the for, foreign? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. We are we are uh, earning not more than 10 to 15 percent from the foreigners. Rather, we are uh, earning most of that from uh, our domestic tourism, from the visitors from uh, South and Punjab. Uh, other than that, we are not uh, earning, uh, earning a 10 to 15 percent from the foreigners. And over the last three years, has this proportion changed? Has has the foreign to domestic fresh proportion changed? Yes, actually, <clears throat> this uh, proportion has been changing since uh, 2013, 2014. Uh, after the after the uh, you know social media uh, interaction of people, uh, the vloggers, the bikers, the track, uh, trackers cyclists 
uh, a lot of foreigners came over here to you know make vlogs make videos just to mm-hmm. see how pakistan is but uh, due to covid uh, you know as the whole world is being affected uh, from covid 19 so uh, pakistan was listed the best place to visit in 2020 uh in february 2020 but unfortunately in march we were closed along with the whole of the world now mm-hmm. after covid 19 things haven't uh, recovered from uh, from covid 19 and in order to facilitate tourism specifically uh, international tourism you must be you must have uh, you know uh, excellent uh, uh, facilities <clears throat> i mean scanning on the airport for covid uh, viruses so still still we are recovering from the phase of covid 19 but i am very hopeful but i am very uh, hopeful that uh, things will be better but the uh, political situation and the current political turmoil in the country that is uh, uh, that is very portraying us very negatively in the in the international media as well as in the uh, we are on the red list of the travel advisories of a, a lot of countries and uh, how, which countries would that like majorly be you can you can read the travel advisories of uh, uk you can read the travel advisory of norway uh, netherlands finland all the mm-hmm. european countries they even even uh, we are uh, we are a no go state for uh, united states in the in the in the days of elections in the days of elections uh, i myself have read a lot of news in fact one of my clients from uh, america she was there to uh, to from a university uh, east african university from the united kingdom campus so mm-hmm. she was landing in multan and she had a, she had a expo in uh, multan but they had to cancel it out just because of the uh, situation of uh, you know the country mm-hmm. and uh, again we sitting over here know that alhamdulillah nothing is happening and mm-hmm. everything is perfectly fine but in the in the world uh, the things that are media portray uh and uh, uh the image that we have is is uh, very it is very difficult to you know uh, uh make them understand that everything is fine over here yes and that is true okay speaking of our religious sites here uh, in pakistan what are the major sites that the foreign tourists are, are interested in to visit in pakistan uh, uh okay well so as i said before that we if, uh, specifically speaking we have three religions uh that can easily visit pakistan number 1 is sikhism number 2 is buddhism number 3 is islam see so uh other than that we have other religions in pakistan for ex- for instance the kalasha tribe and the kalash culture but that uh, mean a, a minor uh, religion minor religion. all over the world yeah that is why not a lot of people are interested but still that is also a part of interest of, of uh, a lot of uh, countries so uh, as i told you that pakistan is the birthplace of sikhism yes uh, since guru nanak was uh, was born here and every year uh, sikh pilgrims have to come to pakistan in order to visit their holy sites mm-hmm. then uh, we have a lot of uh, holy sites of sikhs as i already mentioned that dera uh, saheb yes. uh, करतारपुर ननकाना साहेब रोड़ी साहेब पंजा साहेब देन कटास राज सो वी हैव सम साइट्स इन हसन अब्दाल सो वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ साइट्स फॉर सिख सिखिज्म स्पेसिफिकली इन पाकिस्तान देन कम्स देन कम्स द नेक्स्ट रिलीजन बुद्धिज्म नाउ अ लॉट ऑफ कंट्रीज फ्रॉम मलेशिया थाईलैंड कंबोडिया वियतनाम चाइना all of the east is uh, you know influenced by buddhism mm-hmm. sri lanka almost all so all these uh, tourists we we can uh, they they are interested in mostly in texela in barikot these are the sites which are which have ruins of uh, buddhism mm-hmm. we have some ruins in gilgit in skardu in malam jabba so these are very holy sites uh, for them but uh, uh, again as i told you that then, then the third number is obviously islam we have a very rich history of islam mm-hmm. including the uh, badshahi mosque of lahore then the faisal mosque then we have a lot of you know mosques shrines sufi uh, sufi culture you can see over here you have uh, uch sharif you have uh, shah rukn e alam so you have a lot of uh, sites for the sufi shrines over here that is then again the mosques 
so these are the three basic and main uh, religions which mm-hmm. can be targeted and which can be uh, you know people can come into pakistan to see and the demand is also affected by festivities or and what can we do to increase it during the festivities festivities actually like, mm-hmm. of course please go ahead i get it i get it uh, the thing is that again on on our part we can only uh, you know contact people we can only uh, ask them to visit pakistan but uh, initiatives on macro scale uh, initiatives from the uh, provincial governments from the uh, federal government that will these are the only uh, things that can uh, you know uh, give assurance to other countries other governments that they like you you have i can i can name some of initiatives like you have seen the expansion of kartarpur yes. kartarpur was there from like from like 100 years but it has been expanded it has been opened for the uh, sikh pilgrims from india so now everyone knows about that why because that initiative was taken by the government to facilitate the sikh pilgrims so these kinds of initiatives uh, you know make some news uh, allow other country even even the indian government was hesitant in sending pilgrims to pakistan mm-hmm. even then we have a lot of uh, sikh uh, pilgrims from all over the world from canada america british uh indian so that's what i'm saying that the initiatives from government point of view uh, we mm-hmm. need initiatives on macro level pakistan uh, people of pakistan are very hospitable people of pakistan are very uh, you know they are very uh, welcoming but we need things on the macro level that's what i'm saying yes of course and if you were to list any three strengths that we have in the religious travel experts uh what would those be of course you highlighted uh that we are very hospitable and we are all of that but in religious uh, travel services we have the sites but what other strengths uh, do we have that can attract more people in uh number one thing is that we have uh, history i mean we have uh, uh, historical sites which are uh 3000 4000 some some sites are even 5000 years old uh, we have history historical dunes i call it the historical dunes i mean uh, we have uh, historical dunes of buddhism we have historical dunes of sikhism then islam so uh, that's that's our strength number 2 uh like the great wall great wall of china everyone has visited it but the dunes that we have are very unexplored very unvisited uh very few people as compared to the other sites of the world have uh, visited those so that's that can be another strength that uh, you know that that can be another charm that okay come on visit uh, this place because not much people have seen this you know so that can be another strength and the third strength will be pakistan is uh, economical it's inexpensive it's cheap uh if you visit other countries and you we uh, see their uh, holy and historical uh, sites religious sites they are very expensive you in order to visit a temple it, it they charge you we don't charge uh, anyone so this is this is uh, because this is the number one uh, problem of every visitor that they are, they are on a limited short budget so uh, that's the problem so we pakistan is ex- uh, inexpensive pakistan is economical pakistan is cheap and uh, the religious- these are the things yes Yes, please. And, and about the religious sites themselves, do do are the conditions satisfactory, or do do they need to be improved? And what needs to be done to improve them? You know, friend, uh, actually, uh, there is always a room for improvement, as you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for Pakistan, especially, there is a room for uh, improvement uh, because we are an inexperienced tourism market. Uh, like, if you see Malaysia, if you see Thailand specifically. Uh, thailand is a very experienced uh, tourism market but mm-hmm. on the other hand uh, china is uh, china then uh, if you see cambodia vietnam they they have uh, this bhutan they have received a lot of tourists over the year you know uh, tourism uh, country so we need more infrastructure we need uh, more uh, uh, you know people getting involved in tourism we need to take tourism more seriously uh, i mean over the just over the past 5 years i think so that people are you know getting aware that okay this is also a source of income this is this can also be a very good part for the economy of pakistan otherwise people are not very much interested in uh, tourism 
so there is always a uh, room for improvement yeah yes uh, and if we are speaking specifically of the visa policy of pakistan of course mm. we are inexperienced uh, but what what is the need to improve the visa uh, policy is there is there a need or is the visa uh, policy just uh, satisfactory uh get i can get a visa of sri lanka in like 3 hours now this is a very uh, this is a very attractive time i mean you can imagine the time right now i am in a flight i am travel uh, visa in pakistan visa of pakistan is uh, currently you can get a visa of pakistan in like 3 days this is a good time i am not saying that it is better than before because before we had to visit the embassy and uh, it takes a, i mean weeks 2 3 weeks so and again we have to meet people uh, you know they ask questions why are you visiting when are you visiting when will you be with that what should i add in the what your hotel booking that that's a hassle you know to answer uh, all these questions so right now we are getting uh, visas in like 3 days uh, which is a good time but still i i think so that it should be it should be uh, you know uh, much more improved to like 2 days or even one day because uh, in order to facilitate tourists you have to just be like uh, quick yes that's true and uh, so number one thing is sorry sorry uh, yes continue continue, continue. Uh, number one thing is number one thing is the time frame number number two thing is the a list of documents that we need now we need a letter of invitation uh, every tourists from uh, outside pakistan need a letter of invitation to visit pakistan if i have to visit uh, sri lanka i don't need a letter of invitation if i uh, need to visit thailand i don't need a letter of invitation so uh, again <clears throat> so this is uh, what i'm saying that we need uh, less documentation that is we, an interest i mean yeah yeah that is an interest and uh, if, aside from the issues that you have mentioned are there any other issues that are present and what can we do to improve them i mean um, as i told you that there are a lot of things that can uh, that we can do to improve uh, the things but uh, actually the list goes on from the infrastructure to the visa policy uh, to the uh, again we uh, <clears throat> when a tourist arrives in pakistan we provide them security uh, with security i mean that we provide uh, arm uh, not we uh, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, uh so with the uh, government of pakistan provides them a squad a, se- a security squad so that itself is uh you know very very i mean they they want freedom they can, in order to visit each and every area any market they want to go anywhere so when you are visiting a country and you have guards with you you cannot move freely you cannot visit freely you, can, you cannot interact freely so there are obviously there are safety and security situations as well mm. um, that is true uh, so uh, that is all uh, from my side thank you so much for your time um, if uh, samir sahab would like to usman main aapko jo hai na do char aise sawal puchunga kyunki aapka bahut wasi experience hai isme hum jaise jaate hain umrah pe hajj pe to ek particular time duration hota hai kafi time hota hai jaate hain aate hain hamare jo tourist aate hain religious wale buddhist aapne bataya hai तो कोई टेम्पल्स या कोई इस टाइप की चीज है कि बस वो आसारे कदीमा देख के वापस चले जाते हैं क्योंकि फिर कोई अटैचमेंट है सच हो नहीं पाती ना जैसे मिसाल के तौर पर आ रहा है वहां दुआ कर रहा है वहां दो रातें रुक रहा है तो वहां की अटैचमेंट है इन लोगों की बुद्धिस्ट की और इनकी सिखों की हमारी रिलीजियस साइड से सर सर सिखों की तो देखे सिखों की तो प्रॉपर अटेंडी बनती है फिफ्टीन डेज के राउंड हम उनको सारे वो जो है वो विजिट करवाते हैं जो उनके Uh, होते हैं और उसमें फिर इनका बैसाखी का होता है फेस्टिवल इसमें गुरु नानक की एक जन्मदिन होता है काफी चीजें होती हैं ठीक है अब बुद्धिस्ट जो हैं सिंस ओवर द पास्ट फाइव इयर्स जो है वो बहुत कम हो गए हैं आना और कोविड की वजह से तो बिल्कुल ही खत्म हो गया था तो वो हमारे पास उनके लिए भी एक्टिविटीज हैं करवाने के लिए उनके रिचुअल्स हैं उनकी चीजें हैं जो वो आके करते हैं उनके बड़े होली स्टोन हैं दे आर दे आर they are willing to buy them these stones in very heavy prices uh, jaise aap agar jaye khana kaaba aur aapko koi khana kaaba ka glass de raha ho aur aapko wo us ye price pay karni pade to you will be ready to pay that so same go mere ab mere paas ek uh, singapore ke client the to wo tax la gaye to unko ek uh, ek jo hai na wo patthar mila wo shayad matlab ab wo <coughs> wahan ke museum mein unko dikhaya ja raha tha 
तो ही वॉज रेडी टू पे अराउंड टू थ्री लैक्स फॉर दैट जस्ट फॉर दैट स्टोन हमारे लिए वो सिर्फ एक पत्थर था सो so, अगेन मैंने आपको बताया ना कि सिंस होली साइट्स की कोई वैल्यू uh, नहीं होती उसको एज इन उसमें नहीं तोला जा सकता और मैंने आपको बताया कि उसमें हम उनके रिचुअल्स यहाँ पे uh, करवा सकते हैं uh, उनके जो बुद्धिस्ट uh, के मॉक्स होते हैं उनको यहाँ ला के और फिर जो पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं हमारे पास कुछ ग्रुप्स आते थे वो दे एंटर साउथ कोरियन ग्रुप्स आते थे तो दे एंटर फ्रॉम चाइना और फिर वो चाइना से होते हुए पाकिस्तान आके और ये सारा कुछ विजिट करके वो वापस चले जाते थे तो उसके अंदर जब हम एक्टिविटीज उसमें प्लान करेंगे ना तो डेफिनेटली उनका लेंथ ऑफ स्टे बढ़ेगा यहाँ लेकिन दे मस्ट बी सम ऑथेंटिक एक्टिविटीज एंड अगेन उसके लिए मैंने बताया ना मैक्रो मैक्रो लेवल पे आपको इनिशियटिव लेने पड़ेंगे और एक चीज और थी कि ये आप कोई अप्रोच खुद करते हैं कि आप जाके इनको अप्रोच करते हैं ये जो डायरेक्ट इनके ग्रुप्स आते हैं बाहर से जो आते हैं सर उसके लिए डिफरेंट तरीके कार हैं हमारी जो है वो ऑनलाइन मार्केटिंग है हमारी वेबसाइट के थ्रू है हमारा जो है वो एक्सपोज लगते हैं जैसे कि मैंने आपको बताया अभी ट्रेवल एंड एडवेंचर शो था न्यूयॉर्क में वो हमने अटेंड किया So, वो है इसी तरह बी टू बी हमारी ट्रेवल एजेंसी के साथ कम्युनिकेशन चलती रहती है तो उनके पास भी कोई क्यूरी आती है तो वो हमें दे देते हैं तो दीज आर द थिंग्स जो के हम कर रहे होते हैं स्मान थैंक यू सो मच नो मोर क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम माय साइड तो अगर कुछ खराब हो कुछ आएगा तो शी सेंड यू एन ईमेल इफ इट्स ओके विद यू सो 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 शोर थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर टाइम थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू अल्लाह हाफिज़ अल्लाह हाफिज़